What is up, players? It is I, Warboss Tay, and I am going to be filming a Fluff Hunters video on the Vestroian Firstborn. And uh, that is my first attempt at doing a horrible Russian accent. So, uh, let's take a look at these guys. They are obviously modeled after the Russian Cossacks with the big fluffy hello hats and everything. And yeah, I think that's what they say. Based on the archaic uniforms worn by the Cossacks of Russia during the 18th and early 19th centuries, as well as the uniforms of other European soldiers between the time of the French Revolution and the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815. So all you history buffs will definitely recognize that kind of aesthetic. Now, um, I remember when they first came out, John Blanche, who is that uh, crazy old man that does all the art for Games Workshop, he... <clears throat> made uh like all the design on these guys is based on john blanche's art and you can tell when you look at the art with the big poofy hats but the gas masks with the eye lenses that are very ghostly and yet the very archaic baroque uniforms look at the wood grain of this uh las rifle there and uh obviously the standard bearer that i painted up is based on this guy who's got his like uniform half on half off so this is one of the cases where the models and the design of the models definitely followed the uh, design in the art, the artwork. And um, there are other cases where it's kind of like vice versa, where the, the models kind of come out first and then the artists um, kind of go off of that. But this is one of those cases where the, the, the model almost, almost um, completely faithfully adapted the look of the art and... Um, transformed it into the model. This would have been a cool one to see. It's a Laz pistol that is also a two-handed axe. So you can see the um, the little handle of the Laz pistol here. It's not like a Laz gun. It's not like a, a gun axe, but it's like a pistol axe. Freaking what the what? Crazy, right? Unbelievable. Uh, here's some Vostroyan nobility. You take a look at the nobility. They have big poofy white hats, and this has got a the big bushy mustaches and the servo skulls and the, they've got a lot of V's, a lot of V's uh, on their on the models anyway. And then another look at them. Um, but yeah, the Vestorian firstborn were, like I said, one of the, if not the last Imperial Guards models to be released in metal only. There's no plastic option for these guys. They were only released in metal, so they had the decades of experience of molding and sculpting with metal, but now they were introducing all these new elements which allowed them to do things like, when you look at the models, do things like uh, grenades and sashes and um, not only doing cloth here, but also embossed emblems of like the double-headed eagle, chainmail, and um, all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff. So there's a lot more detail on this than you would find on, say, the Valhalla Ice Warriors or the Talon Desert Raiders, Mordian Iron Guard, or Armageddon Steel Legion. And a lot of people say that this was great. The their Imperial Guard needed a boost like this. And um, other people, detractors, said that it took away from what they should be focusing on, the cash cow that was the plastics and the uh, Cadian and the Catechins and... Um, trying to trying to create uh, awesome looking plastic models that could be used for a variety of different armies. Um, some people said that Cadians, because they're so uniform, you could paint them in any color you want. The Cadian shock troops could be painted in like blues and whites and grays and uh, yellows and oranges, and they could be s said that their uniform was issued by the nearest Forge World to look exactly like that. Whereas with Vostroyans, with the Armageddon Steel Legion, with the Talarn Desert Raiders, it's ve it becomes very limited. Like you would have to have a world, if you weren't going to make them from Vostroya, you would have to make them, make these, uh, justify in your army background why these troops have the big bushy mustaches and the big poofy hats and the Baroque um, archaic weaponry. So... <clears throat> Um, they got a boost recently because in the Games Workshop or the Fantasy Flight Games, I should say, game, uh, role-playing game, where you get to play a member of the Imperial Guard only war, the Vostroyan Firstborn is one of the regiments. So they have all this new awesome artwork. Here's this Melta Gunner with a gas mask. 
here is a trooper here or a sergeant rather and um, something that's different is that they made their uniforms look a lot more uh, realistic then when you look at the first destroying firstborn uniforms on Games Workshop website you will see that they are in fact let's uh, whip it up right now Games Workshop you'll see that the um, they don't have pants in the in in apocalypse in their sculpt of the models they have these great coats that seem to hang down almost all the way down to their boots and then you can see their boots kind of like peeking over so uh, I know there was a squad on the wiki page I was just on but I kind of want to show you the like this guy's got some pants uh, this guy's got some pants their uniform at the bottom you'll notice is a little bit differently sculpted then say for example let's get to these Vastroyans um, uh, here we can look at the squad then these guys whose great coats hang all the way down to the tops of their boots so you can't really see their trousers that's one thing that they kind of uh, fixed up with their um, with the artwork here I mean look how realistic and awesome it looks and even their armor is not this bright reddish bronze gold that is like Balthazar gold that you see from here uh, I mean like look how orangish and reddish yellowish their armor or the gold on their armor is the artwork makes it look a lot duller a lot more like Rune Lord brass I believe it is. Yeah, Rune Lord Brass, which is what I'm using for my Vastroyans, and it creates a much nicer finish, much more gritty and realistic, and not as uh, cartoony, bright, reddish, um, bronze-ish like like this gold is. But let's take a uh, let's talk a little bit by looking at the aesthetic of the um, the models. You've got these dark red coats, gold trim on a lot of things, and a lot of like leather, chain mail, and um, stuff like that. And the, th the thing about these models, you'll notice, is that most of them look like grumpy old men with big bushy mustaches. In the role-playing game, they kind of encourage you to think that there are just as many females if not uh, slightly less, than their male counterparts. So, for example, in the role-playing game for the entry of a medic, they have this female Vastroyan um, medic with some blood spatter on her shoulder pad. That looks awesome! And uh, as well as over here on her uniform. And it just looks fantastic. And I wish that there was the option to take uh, female models I know that this is, oh, there's a whole can of worms, right? Should there or should there not be female-looking models for the Imperial Guard? Because they're human, um, they're not an alien race like the Eldar or the Dark Eldar, where we can say that they're just as vile and bloodthirsty as the male counterparts. I think it would be cool to have uh, female models and sculpts. And, I mean, a lot of people do, too, when you look on... Um, modeling or painting project logs on different forums you see a lot of people asking oh what can I use as a counts as uh, like a stand-in catechin female torso or uh, something like that so there's there's the need out there I don't think it's a very big need which is why you don't see too much but um, in the artwork I like that it's represented and I like the idea that <clears throat> um, Vastroy and Firstborn uh, have women in them Although, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that right up there. Hmm. Okay, so what makes the Vestroyan Firstborn what they are? During the Horus Heresy, they were a... I don't know if they were a forge world or they're just a very heavily industrialized planet. Uh, it says they're a hive world. Yeah. Anyways, what happened was during the Horus Heresy the Imperial Army was saying, hey, we need all your guys because we need troops to feed into the Imperial War Machine. And Vastroya said, no. They said that we could better serve the Imperium by continuing to devote all of our efforts to the manufacture of weapons and to give up 
uh, that to give up so much of its population to become warriors of the Imperial Army would render it incapable of producing these weapons in, weapons in sufficient quantities. So pretty much the Emperor said, Hey Vastroya, I need your I, I need you guys to help man all the guns and be in my armies. And they said, No, we need to stay here and make weapons. So today they live with that shame and what they have done was... Um, they have sworn this oath that they would never turn their back on the emperor again and that they would promise every firstborn son or daughter to um, send them to the imperial guard. And what this does is mean that um, Vastroya, Vastroyan troops all over the galaxy are continually resupplied because uh, Vastroya is, I guess, a hugely populated world. So there's... Um, entries in the book, Only War, that says that um, 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 all these, all, all the regiments continually get refreshed and restocked with uh, fresh fighting troops. So uh, they are one of the most always at fighting capacity regiments in the entire Imperial Guard. Let's look at this piece of artwork, it's so awesome. And um, not many other troops can say that. Like their rate of attrition, if you've got a Katachin reg regiment and um, they take casualties left and right and over and over and over again, um, they're not going to continually be resupplied with troops and uh, replacements like the Vestroyan firstborn. So that's, uh, that, that's a cool piece of their fluff that I really appreciate. This piece of artwork is from, I believe, Planet Strike and that came out a couple years ago. You've got um, armor and artillery. You've got troops down here at the bottom. You've got uh, like the Lord Commanders with their big ostentatious hats, bodyguards, what looks like Masters of Ordnance, astropaths, uh, loaders for the giant cannons. And what the heck is that? Oh, is that like his dog? Maybe that's like his his pet something. Oh, and creepy little man machines taking notations. Oh, so creepy. Anyways, they have this very um, cool aesthetic to them. This look that mixes old, uh, you know, Russian Cossack kind of uh, artistry with that uh, future Gothic kind of look. And I, I think it's great. It's one of the reasons why I chose to do the month-long painting challenge to them. So I've, I'm here on the 40k.wikia.com site. I also took a look at the Lexicanum, but it wasn't nearly as extensive as all this. And um, I highly suggest that you do too for any army that you're painting because it'll give you a lot of great um, inspiration, a lot of great motivation. Uh, it talks about uh, notable firstborn regiments or notable regiments and uh, the campaigns they were involved in as well as uh, notable characters. And yeah, and then you've, like I said, you've got all this stuff at the bottom. Great artwork. Oh, is this from, I think this is from Cities of Death, right? Down here. This uh, Vastroyan firstborn fighting against this like red and white Tau. Really cool. So Vastroyan firstborn, big bushy mustaches, not nearly as many uh, female representation as they should be, but I say it's an easy licious army. It's fantastic to paint. I'm having a great time, and all this artwork from Only War certainly is a big help. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, check out the Lexicanum and Wikia to find out more about the Vastroyan Firstborn. I give them a thumbs up.